Happy birthday, Brendan Kennelly, 80 today. You often recall your dad Timmy's advice just before you first left Bally Longford. Take it easy, and if you can take it easy, take it as easy as you can. And your raven-haired mother, Bridie, whom Timmy and everybody adored. You didn't lick it off the ground. But then, Kerry has its own English, Elizabethan English, you say. A Bally Longford woman, known as a great gossip, was in full flight one evening when suddenly she stopped, realising that even she had crossed a line. You can stop now, tell us more, implored her friends. I can't, I can, says she, because I've already told you more than I know. On another occasion, Brendan and my mother Eileen O'Grady and Moriarty from West Kerry were swapping stories. Brendan told of a shy bachelor who was introduced to a Miss Murphy. He was too shy to call her by her first name, even on their wedding night. The following morning, he turned to her in the bed and said, Miss Murphy, could I trouble you once more? My mother's comment, and trouble it was, I suppose, had them both in fits of laughter. Brendan's prodigious output of nationally and internationally acclaimed plays, poetry, translations and anthologies are well documented. As a young teenager, he sent a poem to Con Houlihan, who returned it with the remark, Well done, Brendan, you make the right mistakes. Brendan played minor football for Kerry in the 1954 All-Ireland Final, losing narrowly. His poem, The Crooked Cross, is about Bally Longford, whose crossroads quarter the village. What's local is universal. If life in little places dies, greater places share the loss. Life, if you will, may just be called one passing game of pitch and toss, and yet a nation's life is laid in places like the Crooked Cross. Brendan's poem, Raglan Lane, shows a deep understanding of Kavanagh's Raglan Road, mirroring its metre and, I think, its beauty. He knew that Hilda Moriarty, though never carnally intimate with Kavanagh, sent the Monaghan poet red roses in the shape of a hitch following his death. In Raglan Lane, in the gentle rain, I saw dark love again. Beyond belief, beyond all grief, I felt the ancient pain. The joyful thrust of holy lust, I slept on heaven's floor. One moment burned what the years had learned and I was wild once more. Following a difference of opinion, Brendan and Patrick Havana's brother Peter, a professor of modern poetry in Loyola University, became estranged for several years, causing Brendan much sadness. Tell Peter I love him, asked Brendan of me, on hearing that I was visiting Peter in New York. I relayed the message to Peter. He didn't reply, just looked at me. Five years later, Peter was being interviewed by John Waters in Trinity College. Where's Kennelly? he asked me. Do you mean Brendan? I replied. A few years later, I met Peter in Enniskeen, where he was making a rare visit home. During our conversation, he switched subjects, saying, Tell Brendan I love him. I got pen and paper and replied, Tell him yourself. He began to write, slowly. He was almost 90. Days later, I met Brendan. He opened the letter, gingerly. Dear Brendan, love. You were always a keen supporter of my brother, Patrick. You wrote a magnificent poem about him. We may meet again, Peter. Brendan's eyes moistened. Months later, Peter died and was buried in Enniskeen on Easter Monday, 17th of April, 2006. Brendan's 70th birthday. The poem Peter referred to is titled A Man I Knew. Brendan once asked Kavanagh where he'd like to be buried. His answer is in the opening lines of Brendan's poem. I want no easy grave, he said to me, where those who hated me can come and stare. Slip down upon a servile knee, muttering their phony public prayer. In the wilds of Norfolk I'd like to lie. No commemorative stone, no sheltering trees. Far from the hypocrite's tongue and eye, safe from the praise of my enemies. 
James Joyce said that a sentence cannot be severed from its musical qualities. Once, on a radio programme on Good Friday, Brendan was asked if he could still remember the questions and answers in the Catechism Book of the Day. Indeed I do, he said, and even now the rhythms beat through my sleep. Brendan has long fallen in love with Dublin, its people, its streets. His passion for walking these streets is described in his poem, Clearing a Space. A man should clear a space for himself like Dublin City on a Sunday morning about six o'clock. Dublin and myself are rid of our traffic then, and I'm walking. Houses are solitary and dignified. Streets are adventures, twisting in and out and up and down my mind. The river is talking to itself and doesn't care if I eavesdrop. No longer cluttered with purpose, the city turns towards the mountains and listens to the sea. I witness all three communing in silence under a relaxed sky. One day near Grafton Street, a woman in her 70s engaged Brendan in conversation, enthusiastically telling him that Moss Cain had climbed some mountain or other as a fundraiser. And did you climb the mountain yourself, Brendan asked her. No, says she, I'd prefer to climb Moss Cain. Students of many faculties regularly attended Professor Brendan's lectures. Two such students encountered him after his retirement and asked for his mobile number. I don't have one, he replied. Your email, they asked. I don't have that either, said Brendan. Brendan, you need email. It's the most popular means of communication nowadays. You must have email, they insisted. For me, smiled Brendan, there's just male and female. Brendan said that for several months after his retirement, he found life difficult. I even missed the things I disliked, he added. Brendan Kennelly, loved for his devilish, dimpled smile, divine delivery and oozing charm. As importantly, as an artist, his legacy will be as one of our most powerful creative writers of the last century. Begin again to the summoning birds, to the sight of light at the window. Enjoy your special day, Brendan, in the surrounds of your family, Doodle, your grandchildren Meg, Hannah and Grace. Bihla special to good and take it easy. Up belly.